Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on the Fantasy Castle on the Floating Island. Today I thought I'd give some tips about the details and about how you can create the different windows nice and quickly. The previous versions are in the playlist in the description. There's also links to other playlists and a great paid for course by CG Boost. So do check those links out if you're struggling in any way. Also, if you are showing your progress, then do get across to the Discord server. Make sure you at Grant there to tag me so I can see your post nice and easily. Okay, so this is roughly where we got to last time, although I have made a new window in here, and I'll quickly go through how I made that. Now you can see our door here and the stones around the door. A quick tip for this, if you want it to look slightly less chunky and a bit more curvy, perhaps a bit more stylized if you're doing the low poly look, is to add the bevel modifier. So if I go to add modifiers bevel, you can see it curves my stones slightly and I can change the offset here as to how curvy those stones are. Maybe just a tiny bit of curve like that. You can increase the segments if you want a smooth look. And of course, then you can right click shade smooth and you've got some nice smooth stones if that's what you're looking for. The important thing about this though is to think about the order of your modifiers. So the shrink wrap is happening first, so it's sticking to the castle first then the solidifier is happening, so it's sticking out and creating solid stones, and then the bevel's going on top of that. That's important because if we move into one of these stones, you can see that this edge here, going backwards, is beveled as well. If I move it above the solidify, it looks totally different. But if I move it below, then the solidifier is happening first, then the bevel on top of it. So I quite like the look of that, so I may add some bevels to my other stones as well. And you can experiment with the offset, as to how smooth you want your stones looking. You can also up the segments, but do remember that's adding more polygons for when you apply it for games. If I press Z on my keyboard, you can see that it's adding quite a lot of detail there, which again, you wouldn't want in your game engine. So I'll turn that down for now. So I want to be able to move this into position, let's say up to the top tower. If I press Shift D to duplicate now, and then start moving it around, we get all sorts of problems because there's two things happening. One, it's got a shrink wrap, so it's trying to shrink wrap to the castle. And two, I've got snapping turned on, so it's trying to snap the shape to the castle as well. So I'm going to right click, so I've got that duplicate there. It's right on top of the old one, and that's what right click does. So I have got a duplicate. Let's just go to the outliner, and I'll call this top window, so there's no confusion. Now in order to move this, it's fairly straightforward. I can just turn my modifiers off for the moment, move it into position, and then turn them back on. So let's minimize the bevel turn them all off in the screen view, turn snapping off. Let's go to front view for this with one on my numpad, G to grab and move it upwards. And then just rotate and move into position. If I press three on my numpad, I'm on the wrong side. So control three will take us to the other side and I can then grab and move that into position. And full stop, will zoom in on my object. So you probably want the windows a similar size. So somewhere around there. You want it to try and match up to the shape fairly well so the shrink wrap doesn't push it too far out of proportion. And just make sure you haven't got any of your mesh that's inside your shape, that may cause problems. So let's go to a vertex mode and just pull those back out. You may also want to modify your shape slightly in case you want the windows looking different in different locations. So now I can turn my modifiers back on, but I've got a slight problem and it's trying to shrink wrap to the castle still. So let's go to that shrink wrap, cross out the target of the cylinder and choose the target of the top cylinder. And there we go, it's shrink wrapped to that, much better. I can go in and select one of these faces and do a base for the window and just extrude this edge across. Oh, it's a good idea to turn snapping back on for this. As you can see, when I press G to grab now, it moves it, so that's why we need snapping on. It does help us when we're moving these around into position. So it will go as close to the target as possible. And there we've got a shrink wrapped castle window based on the stones down here. I should be able to grab and move this into position. It is tricky though, and you can see the snapping taking effect. So if I don't like the position of this, it's probably best to turn the shrink wrap off. Let's turn the solidify and the bevel off as well. That'll help us. I've gone back into edit mode to make a few minor adjustments. Okay, so let's select all, turn snapping off, G to grab and just move it up slightly. I think that's a better position now and then turn them all back on. And that looks great. So same process again, if we want to duplicate this window and put it anywhere else, Shift D to duplicate, but I accidentally was in edit mode, so I'm going to undo that. Go to object mode, Shift D to duplicate, right click, 
turn them off, make sure snapping is off as well, and move it across into position. This time control one so I can see the back side. And turn them all back on again. Little bit wonky that one. So I'm just rotating without snapping turned on so it doesn't go all crazy. And there we go. Okay, so for some of the details like the insides of the windows, for example, let's go back to the one I'm on and let's take one of these faces and duplicate it, so Shift D. Now I've still got the shrink wrap modifier on so it's sticking to this. I can turn snapping on so it directly sticks. I did that in edit mode, so I'm going to press P to separate my selection, so that's now a new object, into object mode, and select that object. I'll turn the view off for the modifiers for the moment, and go back into edit mode, and I could move these points around and extrude and gather the shape of this, or I could just bring them right outside, like this. I've still got snapping turned on, so it's snapping to the front faces of my stones, not the cylinder. Just move that out a touch more, actually, about there. And then use the knife tool. So K to go into the knife tool, left click to select a point, and enter when you're happy. And then cut out the shape of the window, just so it overlaps slightly, and then press enter. Then go to face mode, and select control I, and it will select the outside faces, and press delete. Faces. And now we've got an inside window, and it's nicely in line with our cylinder at the back here. If you want it to shrink wrap successfully, you might need to give it some more subdivision. So perhaps into edit mode, we can select all and control T to triangulate, and then it will sit back into position. Although you do get these slight anomalies from things like the bevel modifier. So it's a little bit thick at the moment. So we don't really need the solidify, so I can take that off entirely. So hide in the viewport and the render, or we can just close it down. But we might want to use it later, so I'll just leave it there, but it won't be rendered or in the viewport. The offset, however, for the shrink wrap is pushing it out quite far, so we can bring this back so it's underneath our stones. And that will make a nice window if we come across the shading. Go to object mode, give it a new window material. I'll zoom in on that, go to rendering, and then we can increase the roughness and give it a bluey color. Now we're seeing a bit of reflection there, that's probably enough for this type of scene. Maybe just a touch darker blue. You may need to turn on, in the render tab, screen space reflections if you want it to have slightly better reflections. So that's doing the windows. There's a few things we can do with the roofs as well to make them look a bit more interesting. Let's go back to layout mode, click on one of the roofs, and I think it would be best to separate it from the base. So into edit mode, I'll select the edge loop in here, so two to edge mode, alt, left click to select the edge loop, G to grab, oh, and I've got snapping on, so I'll just turn snapping off, G to grab, and I've already separated it. So if you haven't separated it already, you press V to rip vertices. So if I select this edge loop to show you how to do that, if I press V, it will split them apart like this. I'll just undo that. So the same for this one, V to rip. These are already ripped, so they are separate like this. So all I need to do now is select all and P, separate by loose parts. That will make the roof a separate object from the base. So let's click on the roof, go into edit mode, and there's a couple of ways you can make the tiles. The one I find the easiest is to use the knife tool. So press K for the knife tool, you'll get this knife with a green square on the end. And when you go over a vertex, you can see that it has a red outline. And that's the best place to add a cut. So I can cut one there. Now I want to create one in the middle as well here, which I'll join up in a second. So I'll create one there, there, and then back to that end point there. And press enter. Now I can go to vertex mode and select this one and this one, and press J to join, and this one and this one, and J to join. Then I can go to edge mode, select this edge. Let's press full stop on my numpad, or period key on my numpad, zoom in, and then just go around to the side and grab it outwards. And we've got a jutting out roof tile. I can scale the middle up a bit into position. And there we have it. So we can do a few of those around the place. Now this gives a really nice low poly look. So if I go back to object mode and into shading mode, you can see it's got a nice sort of roof tile look there. If I shade smooth on this, however, it doesn't look too bad, but it's not quite the same effect. 
But if you're painting this on, it'll be fine and you just paint highlights and crevices. So you'd only put shade smooth on if you weren't doing low poly and you were doing hand painted. So that's one roof tile. I think I'll do another couple of roof tiles in the same way. So you can see once again, the techniques. Knife tool, cut, 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 cut. Enter to select the cut. And then vertex mode, select the two, J to join. Then you can select that edge, grab to move it out, and we've got another roof tile. I will actually go back to shade flat now. And let's just tidy that up a bit. It can look a bit jaggedy. I think that looks a bit better when it's like that. Another thing you might like to do is grab the very end faces here and extrude a few out and just move them into position slightly so they're in line with your roof and maybe make them a bit random. So just E to extrude and move it into position. And you can see it's looking quite interesting now. You can go one step further and with the knife tool, create a cut in here that goes all the way around. Into face mode, select those faces. I'll zoom in with period key, delete those faces, and then select these two faces and fill, F to fill. And you can create those sort of notches as well in the roof tiles. I think one of those in here would look good. So K for knife. Don't worry too much that you're creating n-gons. They're on flat surfaces, so it's not too bad. Sometimes your knife tool messes up like this. Just right click and restart. Yeah, so I've done it again. I've clicked by accident on the back there. So I'll escape that again. I'll go from the other side this time. K for knife tool, there we go. Select those faces, delete the faces, and then go to edge mode and fill those in. And we've got another notch there. I think it can be a good idea to change the size slightly of the pieces sticking out. So if I press GG to edge slide that and GG to edge slide this, so it creates a thinner one. And then three to go to face mode and extrude this out, round to the side, line it up. And we're getting some nice, interesting roof tile shapes. You can combine these two techniques. So I'll do that around the edge here. I'll select this face under here, E to extrude and pull it out. I'll press K for the knife tool and come right into here for this one and press enter to set. One for vertex, J to join with those two and J to join with those two and select these two and pull them outwards. And there's quite a fat roof tile, so I might need to adapt that shape slightly. And there we go, some interesting patterns on our roof that help give it character and I think a bit more of a fun feel. Do remember to go in and edit your shape slightly to help that character along. So moving some of the vertices around is quite important if you're trying to get that nice low poly feel and that sort of chunky look. Not so much so if you're going to be doing hand painting later on. So in the next session, I'll be hand painting the castle and going through some tips and tricks about that. I think I've decided that there's going to be a dragon over this side and maybe a knight on a horse, but whether I'll make a tutorial on that or not, I'm not so sure. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. Do show your results on the Discord. So until next time, thanks for watching.